We're going to focus on the painted elk hide on the right side of the screen in just a moment. But I'd like to focus first, if we could, on the beautiful photographic portrait on the left. Now, who the person who we see in this photograph is a Shoshone artist whose name looks like it would be pronounced Katsiogo, but in fact, the way he pronounced his name was Kosiko. So, um, I'm, I would like now to pause, and I'm going to move to a... Um, enlargement of this photo. And so what I would like you to do is simply, in your Google Doc, simply list all of the specific things that you see. Come back to me when you're ready. My bet is that the very first item in your list, or at least very close to the first item, would have been the American bison, or the buffalo, as we sometimes call them. So, why would we see buffalo in a painting by a Shoshone artist? I, I suspect that you have been taught before that the lives of all of the Plains Indians absolutely revolved around the buffalo. They used every single part of the buffalo in a very respectful way. And so they used it for their clothing, they used it for their shelter, they used it to create tools, they used it for their food, um, they used, um, they used um, the buffalo dung as fuel for their fires. Literally, their lives completely revolved around it. Well, this was all fine and well until the American government and the American people with the idea of manifest destiny decided that the United States needed to be able to expand to the West. And so consequently, one of the more shameful events in American history is the purposeful attempt to eliminate the herds of some 30 million buffalo from the American Great Plains as a way of trying to subdue the Plains Indians. The, the Plains Indians, including not only the Shoshone, but, but other troops like the Apache and the Comanche and the, and the Sioux, um, the Cheyenne, um, these were the most warlike of all of the Native American groups. And um, the American government was having a tremendous amount of time trying to bring them under control. And so um, there was an actual campaign to try to make the buffalo extinct. Um, the phrase that was used was, was every one dead buffalo equals one dead Indian. Isn't that absolutely shameful? Well, okay, so we go to a situation where by the 1880s, we had gone from a herd of some 30 million buffalo in the Great Plains to a point where we were down to only a few hundred buffalo that were still existing in the wild. Now, the impact of this on the Plains tribes was absolutely devastating. So um, this work is a wonderful, wonderful example of a way in which we can talk about how artists' decisions are shaped by historical situations, how the choices that artists make are, are derived from the context in which they are creating the work. And so the first thing that I would like for us to talk about is how does the historical context affect the artist's decisions in terms of the purpose of the creation of this work? Well, a tiny bit more historical background will help us with that. The Shoshone were forced to abandon their, um, their way of life in which they followed the buffalo herds um, in a nomadic lifestyle. And um, they were forced onto the Wind River Reservation um, in Wyoming. And with this, they totally lost their way of life. Now, I, 
I sort of imagine that as for myself being like, I don't know, being forced to, to move to Mars and um, I don't have my school, I don't have my students, I don't have my books, I don't have my, I don't have my laptop. And so consequently, I, my whole identity as a teacher, my livelihood has been removed from me. So what the people on the reservation did was they began to try to supplement their income by creating works of art that Euro-American tourists who were coming on to the reservation out of curiosity um, would buy. And so Kosika's father is a well-known Shoshone artist whose name is Chief Washaki. And what he did was he tailor-made these works for sale to these Euro-American tourists. So um, using my analogy of being forced to move to Mars, I can imagine that if there were people on Mars and the Martians were curious about my life back here on Earth, then what they might want me to do if I were going to create some sort of visual art is, and, and, and I needed to sell it, is they would want art that showed what my life was like before. And so, in fact, um, Chief Washaki, as well as his son Kosiko, as we see in th this work, are acting on the purpose is the sale of these works to these tourists. They have to make a choice about what content they are going to um, include on these works based on the desires of these, these consumers, the desires of their customers. And what their customers want to see is what was life like before they were on their reservation. And so they've got this sort of romanticized view of the buffalo hunts and, and the village with the teepees and, and, and dancing uh, and the dances that were done and so forth. And so Consequently, this determines what Kosiko includes in this painted elk kind. Now, another of the another of the decisions that is being affected by the context of this work is that in the period before they were um, confined to the reservation. They had been painting on buffalo hides for generations and generations. Um, they painted the insides of the teepees in which they lived. And so this is a long-standing tradition. But before they were confined to the reservations, what they would use as traditional materials that they had access to. And so they would tan the buffalo hides and they would paint on the actual buffalo hide and they would use natural pigments similar to ones that we've been talking about before that come from, that come from plants and minerals. And, and, and so these were the kinds of things that they would paint with before. However, once the Shoshone are confined to the reservation, in order to be able to continue this artistic production and in order to be able to make a living selling these painted hides to the tourists, they are forced to change the materials that they would have chosen, that they would have used by choice. So with the buffalo being ex uh, essentially extinct, there are no more bison hides in order for, uh, for them to paint on. And so consequently what they had to do was they had to buy commercially prepared hides, hides of elk or hides of deer, such as what we have right here. In addition to this, without, the, without, without um, um, uh, access to their traditional paint sources, what they, what they were forced to do was buy commercially available paints. And so we see the much brighter commercially prepared paints in the, in the, in the yellows and in the greens and in the blues, on, uh, even in the reds on this painted elk hide. Okay, so what I would like you to do now is using your crayons, I would like you please just to choose a couple of individual details. And I'd like you please to do a quick sketch of what you see 
And as you're doing it, I want you to think about the way in which Cosico put these images on here. Come back to me when you're ready. I hope that having the opportunity to take a really close look at this enabled you to see just beyond the most obvious elements. I know that you saw the bison, I know that you saw the horses, I know that you saw the teepees, but in order for us to understand the historical context even more, I want us to zoom in on some of the details. And so down here we've got the, uh, we've got two teepees and there is a fire right here with men beating drums around it and you can't really see it very well but there is a, on her back a baby on her back this represents a village scene we've got an honored uh, an honored uh, elder in the tribe wearing a long war bonnet uh, sitting astride a horse to the left scene and, and so all around the edges of the um, of the Al Qaeda, we see the buffalo hunt, which was one of the kinds of scenes that the tourists really wanted on the items that they bought. But another thing that Kosiko decides when he's deciding what he's going to paint on here is he chooses to include dances that the tourists would see when they came to the reservations. Now, this was a very, very charged topic among the Plains Indians because the most sacred dance of all of the dances that they did was the one that was called the Sun Dance. And what, what the Sun Dance was about was it was a dance that was held annually and they would raise the head of a buffalo between two poles. And so we see those elements right here. The purpose of the sun dance was to honor this creature, the buffalo, that their lives so revolved around and to pray to the creator for abundance of the buffalo in the year to come. Now, the, um, the dancers who danced around these two poles with the bison head would dance for four days straight without food or water. And the, um, the visions that they would have in this kind of state were thought of as helping them to communicate with the Creator. Now, the United States government believed that this dance was disruptive, and so they actually outlawed the dance. But as a way of holding on to his tribal identity, he puts elements of the, of the sun dance there anyway. Now, in order to avoid any kind of repercussions, he also adds some other elements of other dances, including the, um, including the elements of, of these dancers down here wearing the kind of outfit that they would wear for, for what would become known as the grass dance, which is, which, now, elements that we see here, some of them were painted by hand, but in other places, what Kosiko did was he used a um, he used a stencil, and so we can see the stencil in the fact that the um, the position of the dancers is exactly the same. He uses different colors, but the position of the dancers is exactly the same. So he's using a stenciled um, a stenciled dancer for that. The same is true of the bison, though they are going in different directions. And while he's got a few different stencils that he uses for the horses, then he's doing that as well. So um, this is another example of the way in which, and we're going to be seeing many of these throughout the year, the interaction of cultures, both positive interactions and negative interactions, is absolutely reflected in the art which is created.